G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in last week's video, we had our first look at Adam's brand new fish room. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you can watch it right here. However, if you are good to go, let's get straight into it with part two of Adam's fish room tour. All right guys, so this is the next tank. What have you got in this tank? So I've got my breeding pair of Julivacromus Ragani Zambia Gold. So as you can see, they have quite a decent size spawn with them at the moment. So this spawn is probably six to seven weeks old. And estimate wise, I'm guessing there's about 150 or so in this spawn. It's the biggest spawn that they've ever had. That's the female that is poking her head out on the right about, there. Yeah. Yep. Making an appearance. Wow, got it on camera. She's very secretive, so that's amazing that she's coming out. Yeah, yeah, they are, even though I, I've had the pair for two years now, they are still very, very timid. A lot of my other fish that I've had for a long time have lightened up. These are still very timid though. Okay. Um, especially when they've got, when they've got fry. So, aquascape wise, this is pull filter sand with say Rye East Stone. So unfortunately, I've got a bit of an algal problem at the moment, so I do have a Calico Brissomos in there as well. Oh, is there? Okay. Um, however, now that the Ragani have Fry, he rarely makes any move from the sponge filter. Kind of hangs over the back of the sponge oh, okay, filter. Yeah, they, okay, so they tuck in. Yeah. yeah, but he has done, he's still doing an okay job on the algae, it was a lot worse. Yeah. He probably comes out at night. Yeah. I can usually tell when they're sitting on a spawn um, by the female's colour, so she'll her yellow. It'll just go. Intensifies? Yeah, very, very vivid yellow. Okay, yeah. Um, and they are more reluctant to come out in the open. Mm -hmm. Interestingly with the fry, when they're young, like even now, their bars are vertical. Which is quite odd, because they've got horizontal barring. When they're adults. Yeah, when they're adults. Yeah. Always found that. They kind of transform into the Yeah, adult. always found that interesting. Barring later in life. Yeah. And so this is the pair that Jason's Ragani are from. And I've got two breeding pairs now. But mine are having maybe three or four babies per spawn, whereas Adam's now have up to 150. <laughs> <laughs> Quite crazy. <laughs> the difference. Yeah. All right, next tank. Okay, Adam, what have you got in this tank, mate? So... I've got my common long fin bristlenose adult breeders in here, plus some endler guppies. So this tank is still in a bit of a, a messy state. I plan to scape it a lot better. Okay. I just moved the fish over into here a few days ago. I just kind of chucked things in. Mm -hmm. You can see in the front here, there's already <laughs> some spawning action going on. It doesn't take the bristlenose long to settle in. They're really literally about to spawn. Yeah. He's got a female and a male in that log now. With this, with the move to this fish room, I didn't want to really concentrate on breeding fish as much. Like, you know, I don't want to be a fish farm. I just want to keep it enjoy. And if they do happen to spawn, then so be it. That's a bonus. Yeah, but I do love my bristleno. So this tank might be an exception. I am going to have a few breeding caves set up in here and I'm not going to try and hide them in the scape either. I'm going to actually try and have them pointing all to the front of the tank so I can see what's going on. Yeah, it's good on you. Um, and then pull out the fry once they're free swimming. Yeah. So Jason was sold some endlers yesterday, so he had his endlers here with him bagged up and they're from my colony here. I gave Jason about some a year ago. about a year ago and when comparing his colony to, to this one, we noticed that mine have a lot more black along the body compared to Jason's, which is interesting because they're both from the same colony. So it's amazing how they've just over time, the genes have kind of moved in Different two different directions yeah mine have taken on them having more black on the bodies yeah whereas jason's appear to have more more orange hmm. it's very interesting it's only taken a year for the color to exactly kind of, just a year yeah yeah to kind of change yeah. all right next tank this is my albino long fin bristlenose breeding tank i think i have seven maybe eight adults in here mm -hmm. actually so i've got three males um, and the rest are females nice ratio yeah, mixed in with them, um, that's my epistogramma orange flash fry. So I've got just over two dozen of them in here growing out. Um, so you can see I've had um, some spawns in here with the bristlenos already. So they've only been in here for about two months. Yep. And I've noticed two spawns so far. And they're very popular. Oh yeah. At the moment. Um, so yeah, again, this is probably going to be an exception where I do actually want to breed mm. and look after the fry properly. Guys, you're talking in some shops for adult 
long fin albino bristle nose, $100. Yeah, yeah which is f f for one, $100 for one. And you can see one of them moving around there. The, the fins are absolutely stunning, like a massive fan. Just beautiful. Actually, you know what? Like, kind of like a Spanish dancer dress. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Escape wise, that's a piece of golden vine driftwood. Okay. And then the that's uh, the stones there. Dragon dragon stone. So that's a couple of small pieces I had left from another tank I did. Um, and plants here, I've just got a couple of Java ferns in there with some Java moss. The plants haven't really taken in this tank. Is that because you're running? You don't turn the lights on as much on this tank. Correct. Because of the bristle nose. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't run the lights as much yeah. um, in this tank because the bristle nose really don't like. Like the highlight. That's right. I mean, like you know, you've got your normal coloured bristlenose. When you've got a dark substrate with a dark tank, you're not going to see them as often because they obviously bristlenose like to hide. They're, they're nocturnal, right? But with albino bristlenose, they stand out. They're, you can, they're really noticeable. When they're long finned albino bristlenose, wow, like they're massive. They they they're just so ca they catch your eye so much, and their fins are just incredible. Um, beautiful adults you got in here, Adam. Just, man, I love the aquascape again. Like, just looks really nice. Really good, nice tank, mate. Let's go to the next one. All right, Adam, what have you got in this tank, mate? So, I don't have any fish in here at the moment. Okay, yeah. But scape-wise, so I've got red lava rock in here, and the driftwood is called Mopani wood. Out of all the driftwoods that I've had, this is the one that leaches the tannins the most, which is why the water is kind of tea-colored. Yeah. I gave this tank a 30 to 40% water change a week ago. Oh, wow. and, it's, okay. and it's already coloured up, so you yeah. can see it does leach quite a lot. And yeah. I've had this driftwood for two years now, so yeah, have you? but yeah. not in water the whole time, right? Yeah, it's, it's been in tank. In it's the been tank. in tank water for two years. Two years and it still leaches. Still leaching. Yeah. My pani. Yeah, my pani wood. Okay. So I do have about five pieces in here. Okay, right. Yeah. So I actually like. I did. You know, I wanted my tanks to look different, so that's why I stocked this with my pani to get that black water kind of look. So I'm not sure what fish I want to put in this tank. When I set this up, I, I did want to have a tank with an archway, like a cave archway structure, so yep. I could have fish swimming in and out of it, underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely sold on this scape though. You want to change it, eh? Yeah, I'm going to change it up. I'm, I'm not too keen on the sand and gravel substrate that I've used here. Right. Um, Is that what you don't like about it? Yeah, I think that's mainly what I don't like, and, so I'm, and you, I might. You're okay with the skate? It's just the gravel. Yeah, and I maybe might take a piece of driftwood out. Maybe I think I might just have a bit too much in there. Okay. Um, free up some more more space for action for the fish to move around in. Right. I mean, like I love the way the Java moss has grown. And those branches look so neat. I was telling Adam before, out of all the aquascape that he's showing me, this is my least favourite one. But now that I've seen it in person, I really, really do like it. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it doesn't come out on camera as well as it does in person, but I really do like the way it looks in person. But I was saying to Adam, maybe it's because of the Java moss that I like it. I'm not sure, I don't know. There's something about it that I do like, and there's something about it that I'm unsure about. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And guys, you can see how narrow this room is now. How small the room is. And how neat it looks. I mean, look at this flooring. So Adam did the tiling in this room, he built the stands as well and it really looks so much better than it did. Did a really good job in this room, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, so dimensions wise it's it's just under six foot from front to back Yeah. and length wise we're at about 3.5 meters ish I think. Okay. So I did want a smaller room to help kind of keep the temperature in control in check. Yeah. So in summer it's easier. Yeah, in summer it does get quite hot where I am. So I do have a portable aircon that I use um, if the temperature does get too hot. It'll be um, much, much more effective in a smaller room like Much this. more efficient to heat and cold. Yeah, that's right, yep. exactly. And actually because we're in winter now, the tanks um, they're all kind of keeping each other warm, I think. It's kind of like a group effort here. Um, when I come out here in the middle of the night or in early in the morning when it's two or three degrees outside, it's still 25 or 26 in this room. It's another benefit of having smaller. A smaller room. room. Yep, nice one. So there you have it, guys. Adam's fish room. What do you think? Looks awesome, doesn't it? One of the neatest fish rooms I've ever seen. 
I'm sure it's going to be one of the neatest fish rooms in all of Sydney. I'm going to go over into his old fish room now, we'll show you what that looks like <laughs> and you can see the difference. Okay guys, we're walking into Adam's old fish room. Bit of a difference. This is not as neat. <laughs> uh, so, he's still got quite a few tanks in here, but a lot of the tanks have now been emptied out and don't have fish in them. Big, a big clean up job left here. Massive really. clean up job. He did have a big stand here. Yeah, I had an eight foot rack. Eight there. foot rack there, right. So and he's dismantled it. That got my eight foot rack still here and I also had a four foot rack here. Right. So I dismantled that one. Yep. Um, this whole rack and all of these tanks will be going. I've only got one tank with fish left in it. And then on this side, so I've just got some freestanding tanks. So that's where my breeding pair of Sex Passiatus Gold are. So they're going to be moved over to the four foot tank. Okay. In the new room. So this two footer, that's where I used to breed my daffodils. So now Jason's given me some of um, his Daphnia. So he's got some Daphnia in here now, yeah. Yeah, so I've got some Daphnia in here and the water is that colour because we added some spirulina to feed them. This three footer, this tank is actually 40 plus years old. Wow. Uh, my dad bought this tank. Um, in 1980. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's got a long history in the family, so I'm just using it as a grow out tank at the moment. This striped fish at the front here, that's uh, Julodochromus ornatus. Look at the yellow on that. Yeah, so I've got that adult plus four of its fry. So unfortunately, I lost the other adult in the pair. I've also got some daffodils growing out. I think there might be a couple mustaches in here, and I do have Walter eye in here as well. So there's, oh, okay. And there's one Sex Fasciatus Gold fry in here as well, who is getting pretty big now. But yeah, as you can see, he's got quite a bit of Cyrea rock. Yeah. Quite a bit, and if you think he doesn't have enough, <laughs> Let's look at this tank. Yeah, so this is my largest tank. It's three foot by three foot by nearly two foot high. So I love this tank, guys. Yeah, unfortunately, it's turned into a grow out. It would make a very beautiful display tank. Um, sure would. Yeah, so at the moment, I've just got it stocked with fry. I have regani, mustaches, daffodils. I've also got water eye in here. I've got some leilupi as well. I've got six fasciatus gold in here somewhere so yeah all of the fish in here will be moved on i'm not planning on keeping any of these or bringing them to the new room but it looks awesome look at this pile of rock all cyrea rock has it got texas holy rock underneath oh uh, yeah i've got a couple pieces odd pieces in there I think. okay yeah and the fish love it they love it i mean i love it <laughs> it looks like you're looking at lake tanganyika you know this is how they would be in the in the wild massive amount of rocks all the caves all these hiding holes view it from multiple angles and what are you planning to do with these tanks are you going to move them are you going to keep them in this or are you going to move them into the other room or so yeah i'm well i'm going to give my father back this three footer mm -hmm. because yeah we're not getting rid of that obviously it's yeah. been with the family for a very long time i was contemplating building a small rack on the side in the new fish room to okay. house this two footer yep. and also this two footer because they're the same dimensions and they're quite narrow. Yep. However, now that I've got that room finished, um, I think it'll, you know, it's, the room won't look symmetrical. I'm not going to do that anymore. So I will be getting rid of all of these tanks. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sell this tank. It's he was going to give this to me nice. and yeah. I wasn't even sure that I wanted it, even though I love the tank. Yes. If he was to get rid of it, I would take it because we can't let this tank go. It's yeah. quite unique. It's, it's going to stay in the tank. family anyway. Yeah, so, regardless. Um, yeah. So either my Some father will take it or um, our uncle also has fish. Yep. It's, it's not going to leave the family. Yeah. So for the time being, I'll just keep it running. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep it running. In here or in the other in I'll, another room? I'll probably move it into the back of, of the fish room. The other fish room. Yeah. You need to grow out tank. Yeah, as a grow you out need tank. A, you need a grow out tank. And unfortunately, yeah, it is a beautiful tank, but he needs something to grow out the fry and perfect for that because it's the volume of water. Wow. There you go. So there you go, guys. That was fish room. What do you think? This one neater than the other one? <laughs> so there you go, guys. Adam's fish room tour. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's one of the cleanest fish rooms you've seen? I personally do. I've never seen a fish room that neat and tidy. And what do you guys think about the aquascaping he's done? Which tank is your favourite? My favourite is that first tank I showed you in part one. 
where uh, he had the round lava stone pebbles. They look awesome in that tank, and I love what he's done with the driftwood in that tank as well. So I really hope you enjoyed Adam's fishing tour. If you did, hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.